Okay, welcome to this video. This is a bit of a uh, progress vlog type thing. This here is my second i7-3930K system. Like my main rig that's actually just behind it at the moment. This is something I picked up cheap a while ago and it's used for when guests come over. It's just another decent computer that can play games. I also sometimes offload rendering jobs to it and CPU intensive things. And it, it's great, it's handy to have it there. Now, it's currently in a horrible state. As you can probably see, there's no memory modules in it at all. The drives aren't connected. The fans are hanging down here off the heatsink. The power supply cables are just everywhere. So it needs work. The side panel doesn't even go on this case, with the 212 EVO in it. This is some aero cool case. This is my first decent computer case. Back many years ago. It's a uh, engine type 1, as you can see it's got this propeller sort of design on the front. It's the Extreme Engine 3T, it's wrote on the front of it here. And uh, it's, an, it's an okay, nice little case. But obviously for the size of the air cooler and the system that's in here, it's a bit of a push. It used to uh, house my original AMD Athlon based system and loads of hard drives, like I had to modify some of these bays to fit extra hard drives. But anyway, enough of that. Onto this system, uh, I'm stripping it out of here, so I'm going to take all the parts out of here, and I've picked up a new case off eBay for, I think, £20 it was, and I'm going to show you that now next. Now this right here, that's so big it won't even fit in the shot, is the new case for the guest PC. This is a fractal design case, similar to the one that my main rig is in just there. It's a Define XL case, which is like the fractal design Define series, but it's a big version in terms of you can put a lot more hard drives and it's more upgradability options and expanded options. But anyway, we've got here a few stickers and things on it that have come with it. I'll probably leave those on for the time being. It's got its front audio, it's got an eSATA port, and it's got four USB 2s. The power light here seems to have had some electrical tape stuck over it. But really, it's in fair condition, pretty good nick. And for £20, which was all I paid for it, you really can't knock it. And the door opens this way. You can see there's more bays. You've got the foam meter to dampen the noise of the fans. There's two fan bays in there. And you can see in there there's the rear fan installed and stuff. But anyway, I'm going to pull the side off this thing and just have a look. I've not really looked over this yet. I literally just got it and put it to one side to make this video. Alright, I'm going to pull the side panel off. It's just on two thumb screws. And you can see it's already loose. So there's the side. It's still got the dampening material over that side fan port in fairly good neck, not too dusty and oh my god what have we got here <laughs> this uh, just seems to get even better of a deal for £20 that I've paid for this case this is a Noctua fan now some of you may know some of you but whoa there's even the hardware with it some of you may know some of you may not but Noctua fans are about some of the best fans that you can actually get for cooling. They're really good performance and quiet. And on average, they vary from sort of 15 to £20 or more each. I've paid £20 for this whole case. This fan's even boxed and it's inside it. Which you really can't complain at. I mean, I've actually got some others here, which I took out of my other personal main rig from updates that I didn't have anywhere to go I was going to say these might end up going into here but I've got fans with it now so yeah these cost me £17 each for these two 120 mil ones here this one's off my heat sink in my other computer but anyway that there I don't know why it's loose but that's probably going to be going either in my main rig or in this system I'll have a see but that's great, I'm going to put that off to one side. 
This case just seems to get better and better. I can see down there that it's got the original screws and hardware in the box. Just kind of loose in there. I presume this contains everything for the case. Yeah, I can see an optical drive blank here. That's for the DVD drive port in the front. We've got a smaller one here for putting like a floppy drive size thing in. And there's the bag full of all the rear blanks and the screws. Well, so also in here, just kind of loose in this drive bay, is some sort of a fan controller knob thing that was in a PCI slot which must be off some sort of cooler or something that he's had an air in the past or maybe it's part of this case, I don't actually know what you get with this case from the factory but still that's pretty cool we've got a plastic thing here, oh it's like a a fan mesh filtered cover that clips over, I presume this maybe goes over the back fan does it? No, maybe. I don't. I don't quite know where that goes. I'll find out in a minute. All the drive bays are installed. This, these ones here are removable, which I will probably be removing, because there's one, two, three, four, five, six drive bays down here, and these four here. This system only has two hard drives in it. It may have more in now in future, but still. You can see the rubber stands for the power supply to sit on there. This is the fan connector for that rear fan. There's a, a fan connector here for the top fan. There's what looks like a maybe a 240mm fan or something up here. A really big top exhaust fan. I'm going to take the phone off the stand for a moment and just show you that there's a really massive fan up here in the top of the case. I don't even know how big that is, I'm pretty sure this is a 140 so that makes this probably like 200 mil as a guess, that, that is some next level kind of fan that right above there to take all the air out of the top yep that rear fan's definitely 140 mil because if you hold that at the side of it wow this case is just a gift that keeps on giving. You can see there, there's a, a converter in to put a 3.5 inch drive, floppy size thing, in the front. The motherboard standoffs are still installed, I think they're the ATX layout. I'd say this case also takes like the big extended server board ATX size. But yeah, th this is pretty awesome. I can see here there's some like clipped in something clipped in there, I don't know whether that's part of the fans or what I'm going to uh, unscrew these drive cages and take the other side off in a moment and have a look ok I've just removed the drive cages and there is in fact also fans in the front fitted so I'm not actually sure where that Noctua one was or if that's just a spare one that they've thrown in with the case so um, yeah I'm going to carry on stripping down and see what we get ok the back panel's off uh, not a lot to see here really there's a nice, nice little door thing here that covers the uh, motherboard where they put where you put the CPU cooler on the back plate, which is quite cool. Normally they're just open, but this has got its little cover slash door thing that go, goes over it. I like that. Uh, yeah, loads of room to put the cable through from the power supply. Quite a bit of space for cable management behind here as well. Lots of loops and things. You can see these are all the front panel cables. There's one on its own here, which is a reset switch. Huh. Perhaps there's a, a reset switch in the side. Or... Oh, yeah, there's a reset switch in the front here, on the side. So that's different. The other Define series don't have reset switches. So that's cool. I'm just going to put that through there with the rest of the cables. So yeah, um, really, for this, for, so yeah, really for the money I've spent on this case, 
It's great what's come with it. There's there's a hell of a lot of stuff here that's worth money. And it's going to be great, I think. I mean, I'll, I didn't really want a case this big for this system. But for the money that I was looking to spend, around about £20, this was the only real option that I thought, you know, it's a good build quality. And if I come to sell this on again, I'm going to get my money back for it. So that was the reasoning behind the choice for this. But anyway, let's strip down the other computer into pieces and then we can rebuild it into here. Alright, it may be a little bit low on light here, but it's really awkward to uh, light up the inside of this case. And I'm just going to start stripping this down. I'll probably put it into super speed as I do this. Just got to time lapse it out. Because I just need to get it all stripped down and then we can do the interesting stuff, which will be rebuilding it. screw broken off on this hard drive here, the head's come off it, oh well. There's probably some people that are going to comment on this video going, oh my god how can you let something of this spec go to that state? And the easy answer is that I've had to put bits to and from it to diagnose other systems and my own. This system isn't actually a main priority to be running all the time as I only use it now and again. It's sort of the odd occasion. Okay, so now I think I've got pretty much everything I'm gonna need out of this system. I'm just gonna throw all these screws in here loose. I'm not even going to bother taking the DVD writer over because let's face it, who really uses one? So I'm going to get rid of this case. Okay, so everything's stripped down now. I'm feeling like I'm going to change these fans. These are NBE Loop B12-1 fans. Which are alright fans and these are a fair price as well. But I'm thinking whilst I've got my Noctuas here, I may put these on one on each side so if I stick one there and one there so the push pulling so that might be a good option so I'm going to change these out and put me noctuas on plus these are PWM fans so yeah I'm going to fit these and have a look at it okay so I've changed out the fans on the Hyper 212 EVO cooler as you can see I've got my two Noctuas by the way these are the Noctua NF-F12 PWM these are static pressure optimized fans great for radiators and heat sinks these are the old fans with the extension things on them so the next task is to get this board some memory which I need to borrow from my main rig that's there because at the moment that has got two 16 gig kits in, one of which is off this system here. So I'm going to go shut my computer down and pull them out now. Okay, now this is my main rig's insides. And you can see there the Corsa kit of RAM. That is the one out of the other PC. There's also some AVX uh, Core Series White, which lights up white. It's got LEDs in it, and that's definitely staying in because the lighting theme in my system is white so I just need to borrow back this kit from the system and uh, we'll put it into the other board okay so the full kit is out and now I could actually put on the other 140mm fan on my CPU cooler because this RAM is much lower back than the Corsair stuff I've just removed However, I can't actually get to the power connector for the fan because it's under the heatsink. So I'm just going to leave it off for the time being and put the system back together. I've got the memory modules and let's get this project we're doing now done. Okay, so my system is now back in one piece. You can see my RAM there flashing away. And right here is the board with the RAM installed out of my system. Now we need to get this dropped into the case.
So that's next job. Okay, time to strap the board in. But first of all, IO shield, not to be forgotten. It's such a pain when you come to put the board in and that's not in there. Okay, the shield's now firmly installed at the back. Okay, before dropping the board in, I've just actually removed this rear fan. And I'm going to put it in the front where there is only one fan. Then I'm going to put this Noctua fan in the back. So that's the plan for now. And I've also had to move one of the standoffs for the motherboard in this corner. Because it wasn't in the right place for the ASUS board I'm about to put in. So let's do that now. Okay, so the included Noctua fan has actually got these little sort of leg things that attach to it. To move the holes to the position of a 140mm fan. Because I'm pretty sure these is a 120 I'm pretty sure it's using the mounting holes for the 120 in its current position as you can see they don't come out as far as on the 140mm fans so if you attach these they'd come out and then it would be that size however these would then need the anti-vibration mounts which are here all broken into pieces so when the previous owner has removed them He's managed to snap them all, as you can see here. So I think I'm just going to go and screw this through, through the 120mm holes in the back of the case, because it'll still do. So I've now got this screw, which I'm presuming is going to be this hole, to mount the fan. And we want it to be exhaust. So let's go with about there, yep, and that matches perfectly, so if I now screw it in with these holes we'll be good. Alright brilliant, that's that installed in the rear of the case, the two front fans are ready to go in in a moment, but next job is to drop the motherboard in. Here comes the motherboard, everything should fit and sit okay. Yep, that's that. It's in place. Let's screw this down. Okay, and there's the last screw in the motherboard. So it's now secure and in place. Uh, I've also got in the accessories bag the uh, beeper, buzzer, whatever you want to call it, the diagnostic speaker for when it's posted, which goes down there. Next job, I think, is the front panel headers and USB and audio and everything else that comes with that which are all these things here so let's have let's put that SATA out of the way for now the furthest away is going to be front panel audio I believe so have we got that here yet yeah. so this is audio HD audio, yep. Yeah. And we want it that way around. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see much of the little fiddly jobs like this with the front panel headers and connectors. But they're really not that interesting, believe me. I'll probably edit a lot of this out. Two lots of front USB here, which we've got USB 13, 14, 12, 11, 10, and 9. So I'm going to go with. 11, 12, and 9 and 10, which are those two. Then these are front panel headers. These are going to be power light, power switch, etc. Okay, so that's the front panel connectors done now. The USBs, the power switch, the audio, and the e setup connection. Those are all plugged in down there. This horrible mess of cables that they are. I'm going to have to try and manage them a little bit. But next job is to get the power supply in, which goes in this little corner area here. This is a non-modular power supply. It's a Be Quiet one. It's been in a couple of my videos recently for diagnosing things. It's a L8 600 watt. Luckily this case has got loads of room to dump the cables in. Down the bottom, out of the way. 
but there's no windowed side panel either which is another good thing about this case so the cable mess isn't as much of a problem okay so that's the final screw in the power supply now I need to turn this thing over and route these cables and stuff through which I'm not even going to bore you with okay just from having a mess around I've come to the conclusion that this plastic fan grill type thing with the filter on that was hanging around must go in here because it's the only place I can see that it would fit so it sort of clips in place like that and then you can put a fan drawing air in through these bays into the chassis so I think maybe that's where it's supposed to go I can't see anywhere else it'll go let me know in the comments otherwise okay so this is a uh, update from well showing where I'm up to pretty much done I've installed the drives as you can see there I've got all the excess power cables just kind of in here out the way I did put a fan in this tray which was one of those NBE loop things but I've run out of fan headers so I didn't have anywhere to plug it into I was very tempted to put the uh, fan controller thing that came in the case in the back maybe in this place here but I've decided against it and I just won't put a fan there so the rear fan here is connected straight to the motherboard the top fan here is connected straight oh the light's gone off on my phone but the top fan here is connected straight to the motherboard here these two are the CPU fans on the cooler we've then got two front 140mm intakes which run along here one's connected down here straight to the board and the other one's straight to the board up here that is every single fan header on this board in the system used up there's no more headers at all if there was one more fan header I would have put a fan in here as well to suck through from the bottom but there isn't I'm afraid but oh well so I've also sort of managed the cables as you can see they're neat now I've put a couple of cable ties in certain places put the cables through where they need to be like this is power for the GPU which I'm yet to put in update on that in a second I'm going to turn it over and here's a quick look at the back side of the system you can see it's uh, nice and neat everything's cable tied together and going down its own place I'm quite happy with that there's really loads of room to do a lot of work with cables behind this thing so next I'm going to flip it round and put the graphics card in and then I think we're ready to do a power on test ok so as you can see it's now ready to have the graphics card installed which you would be expecting me to install this card wouldn't you well actually I'm not going to this here is now being retired from the guest PC because I've now got an upgrade for it so that'll be going into the other another spare PC and this here Windforce GTX 770 will be going in instead which I've got because of a friend doing an upgrade they've gone to a GTX 1070 and this was available it was sat in the cupboard doing nothing so let's put it to some good use so I'm going to whip it out of the box and install it now you can see the card is in I just put the phone down and did it because trust me it was so much easier you really need two hands to install the GPU properly that clip on the PCI socket was also a bit of a pain to get in I definitely would have needed two hands to do that anyway but yeah that's it the full systems together I need to plug a monitor in, plug the power in and see if it boots moment of truth time okay there's the system together the power's plugged in I just need to turn it on just let me put the light down turn on power we've got lights I'm only using this rubbish monitor at the minute but it'll get us into the BIOS oh it's looking good for the number lock light well, there's a beep yes let's get into the BIOS 
CPU fun error, blah blah blah. Yep, the BIOS probably needs setting up again. 13th of the 3rd, 2017 is today, yeah. The time's wrong though because it is 13, well, 14 minutes past midnight. And uh, that RAM is only being picked up as DDR3-1333 when it's actually 1600. But other than that, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, dial in some of these settings and sort these issues out. So we'll be right back. Alright, as you can see the system is now running, all the fans are going. GPU is going. And uh, it's on. Obviously it's got to update drivers and things for the new graphics card and that. And obviously this monitor is way too low resolution for all these desktop icons. But the system's alive. That's it. Just need to put the side panels on now. Okay, so that's it. Everything's back together and running as it should be. Uh, the casing is kind of in a temporary location at the moment, just here. And uh, the system's good to go. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below. If you want to see more future videos from me, random tech videos, computer builds, things like this, please do subscribe to the channel and you can get updated when I upload them. And if you've got any questions, feedback, comments, anything else, leave them down below in the comment section. And I'll see you next time.